Today's demonstration is how to draw um, the blue Cezanne bottle in graphite pencil. It looks like this from my point of view. First thing you want to do is draw a vertical line that's um, parallel to the sides of your page and two little end lines. This will tell you that your bottle needs to fit and can't go off the page. We're going to use a whole length sketchbook page for this. Um, why aren't we going to draw it smaller? There's a lot of detail in it and we want to make sure that we can get that detail in with a colored pencil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next thing we're going to do is we need to figure out the proportions of our bottle from our point of view. Okay. When you look at this bottle, we have to know from our point of view how many times this fits in the height of our bottle. So what I'm going to do from the top to the bottom, what I'm going to do is take my pencil and use my pencil as a measuring tool. Okay? I'm going to set up the bottle on the tabletop in front of me and make sure that my shoulders, oh and by the way, it should be on the flat part of your desk. I'm going to make sure that my desk top is slightly risen, maybe about five inches or so. And then in my non-drawing hand, I am going to hold my pencil like this and use my thumb as an ending point to see how many times I can fit the neck of that bottle into the overall height of the bottle. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. From my point of view, I'm measuring this height and seeing how many times it fits in the whole bottle. So that measurement looks something like this. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Because I'm holding my bottle when I do this, I'm going to have to take a minute to just do it while it's on the tabletop. I'm going to close one eye so I don't see a double vision. One, two, three, four, five. From my point of view, the neck fits five times into the height of the bottle. How do I transfer that to paper? It looks like this. First, I guess. One, two, three, four, I guessed wrong. I'm going to move it down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. And it's a little higher. This is the height. Next thing I'm going to do is practice my ellipses because surprise, surprise, this bottle is comprised by many ellipses. So I'm just going to practice my ellipses to make sure that they're confidently drawn and to make sure that they're symmetrical, both vertically and horizontally. Okay? Too much practice never hurts anyone. I'd like you to all do all of your practices in your sketchbook so then I can look back and see how hard you worked. You know, just from going around the class and helping you with your apple and pear drawings and your banana drawings, I saw the amount of time that you spent working on it and the amount of focus that you used and that did affect your grade. Okay. So, um, so just know that the more you practice, it's definitely not a waste of time. It just helps. Okay. Okay. We're confident in our ellipses. So once we know that, we need to figure out how big our ellipses need to be or how wide they need to be. So what I'm going to do is employ the same measuring technique to measure the width of this neck compared to the width of the entire bottle. And that looks something like this. One, I'm going to me measure the widest part and then see how many times it fits in. One, two, 
from this point of view, it's two and a third. But let me look on the tabletop. One, one, two, and a third. It's actually the same. Okay? So, I'm going to start with a guess. I know this so far looks like a transformer or a robot kind of thing, but let's see. One, one, two. It's a little wide, so I'm going to take it in a little bit. That's my height and width proportion. Okay. Now I'm going to start with my ellipses, because obviously these are straight corners, and we need to rise those corners into ellipses. So what does that look like? I'm going to start off with a shoulder that I know that starts here because of my measurement. Here's the shoulder, and it looks a little kind of elliptical, but kind of flat. This is part of the reason why this bottle is challenging. You want to make the ellipse look slightly wider than how it looks in the bottle, and that's going to give the illusion of form. Okay, We're not interested in necessarily um, drawing exactly what we see. We're interested in creating the illusion of a three-dimensional form on a flat page. So, Okay, there we go. Okay. The bottom of the ellipse, I know, is going to end here. And then my straight lines come down on the sides. I want to make sure my bottle is symmetrical. Next thing I'm going to do, this is the very top of the bottle, so I need to create an open mouth that's fits within that. And then the same, your question might be, okay, so this is a cylinder. What lines do I erase? You don't erase any because the bottle is translucent. And in the bottle, you can see the front and the back of the line. Although the curve of the glass kind of interrupts the line a little bit, you're going to do that later in that interruption or the wiggles in the line um, with colored pencil. For now, the ellipses are the same. Okay? Okay. Now, this line, I actually have a bump of the bottle. So, I'm going to make a second bump. The ellipse needs to be the same as this one. And then I'm going to make two more. As you can see, they're down here. All of those ellipses need to be exactly the same. That's something else that makes this drawing tricky. Okay. At this point, you can erase your line of symmetry because, you know, you just check to make sure that there's equal space on both sides. And if you want to take the time, you can also erase the extra lines that you don't need. You want to make sure that your shoulders are completely symmetrical and that they match each other. Now comes for the hard part, which is the bottle mouth this part right here. There's a lot of detail in it. Believe it or not, this is the hardest bottle. Even though this is on here and it looks tricky, it's really not because it's an organic drawing. Okay. What I'd like you to do is practice up to the side larger and then apply it to the bottle mouth. Okay. So what that looks like is this. Two ellipses that are the same. In this case, no, me no need to measure how many times the mouth fits in. It's just a guess. Then, you're going to create the illusion of depth in the mouth of the bottle. 
the way that you do that is you create an inside and an outside line that represents the mouth of this bottle. So the, this ellipse is the same shape but a different size as the outside ellipse and then it's placed further back in the bottle. This gives an illusion of depth. So this is what the neck would look like. Okay? And once you do that, and you put it on here within your height from here to here. After that, you're free to draw all of this fun stuff. Okay? What that looks like is that as follows. There's a seam across the bottle. You can leave that out, out if you want. In the center of this oval, vertically, is a vine that's all kind of like wiggly. You can really have fun with this because this is an organic shape. You can do what you want to it and it doesn't really matter exactly how it's drawn. A lot, most of this can be done in colored pencil and does not need to be do, done in graphite. Matter of fact, your graphite pencil ha is gray. You don't want the gray mixing with the blue. So it's good to practice this, but on your final, we're actually going to be, be tracing our best one out of our sketchbook on the light table. So in your final, you're not going to trace this. It's important though that this center vine line is parallel with the center with the sides of your glass. And the rest is part of the colored pencil demo and that's it. Thanks for watching.